Hello, this is the Chart Profit video. Not long after the open on Friday the 8th of July. Just a quick recap here from the pre-open. We're looking at the E-mini S&P. There's been uh, plenty of buying uh, marked over the last seven days. Significant buying being marked by the green markings at the top here. That's aggressive buying. That level there is uh, 2041, which was an important level. It's the current uh, point of control of the current distribution. Um, we've made some headway above that and then reached the resistance up here at 2087, which is the major controlling price. I said pre-open yesterday, often what happens uh, when you approach, or when the market approaches a major point of control, is it tends to slow the movement into it. So uh, we are probing from below here and we've been oscillating for a few days. Uh, and this gives the sellers an opportunity to react and make a mark. But we haven't seen that. I made a point of that yesterday. And uh, today, so the e, the e mini been ranging around 2087 for five days. Significant sellers will often react at these points, but they have not done so yet. And then I said, unless selling uh, is marked soon, uh, marked soon, buyers will look for them higher. So the buyers will stall, look for a reaction from the sellers, so they can gauge the strength of the sellers. They haven't seen it, so they will tend to look for them higher. So we're looking here at the live chart, uh, 2087 here. And we've seen the bar today hold that level. We're up from there following jobs data. Uh, up here, 21.25, reasonable target. Basically a test of the June high, and that was based, that target there was hit almost exactly based on the current distribution. Um, just giving it a little leeway gives us 21.25. Um, either that, the market stalls here, or in the most uh, bullish scenario, we're in a new distribution. Uh, one started in February. If that's complete, we're in a new bullish distribution from late June. Uh, and we will get an idea on that from price action over the next few days. If the market stalls, if it manages to reach 21.25 and then turns back down very quickly and we get a reaction from the sellers, we could still be in with that same distribution. But at the moment, it's uh, all green over the last few days, indicating buyers active and pretty effective and therefore in control. So it's up to the sellers to make an appearance, prove that scenario wrong. Uh, obviously price, if it does print higher and subsequently prints back below 2087, that would again indicate 2041 or a test of that level. We need some see to see even on the minor time scale or really on the minor time scale, we need to see some effective um, activity from the sellers. Not seen yet quite soon after the open, so I'm going to run through the sentiment charts first of all, and then we'll go back and look at the uh, indices, etc. Uh, looking here at the market chart through Thursday for New York, showing the breadth indicators below, uh, just about the bullish percent number down here, percentage of stocks greater than their 50-day moving average, just about above 50, and this indicating here, uh, just above this, net new highs 25, 5-day moving average above zero, uh, both above their levels that I call supportive for the market. This top indicator getting a little overbought up here. But the bottom two indicators giving us a green on the breadth chart here on the breadth line. Uh, the price momentum is still negative, so the trend for price, as, uh, as, as I define it, uh, daily price trend is still down, but the momentum is picking up, and that will often uh, break through zero, like it did here, and give us an indication that the price trend is up, as it did here. Should that happen and we stay green in here, it would look much healthier. As we know, in the minor time frame, the first thing that happens is you start seeing green on the profile. So these green bars here lifted from the E-mini profile imbalances. And here's a little updating uh, in the very minor time frame. This level here has actually moved higher on the spider. So what happened just yesterday on the spider, this is the live chart, we saw the major point of control, which was 205.40 move back up, it was previously at 209.90, and it has now moved back up to that level. Um, and we are printing above that level. And as long as we hold 209.90 on the spider, this is a very strong price location. Looking here at the Rydex, or my version of the Rydex assets ratio at the bottom, ratio between the bull fund assets and the bear fund assets in a number of Rydex uh, funds and ETFs. And that ratio continues to stay uh, muted, um, reached a high in April, a multi-month high in April at 5.27. We're currently still printing below that. We know that as we came off the low here, 
back in February. Now we had a little rally in the ratio, but it still stayed hi historically very low. Um, certainly over the last few years, when we compare levels, we saw the ratio up here above uh, well, almost at 14, and we're still down below 5. S&P's picked up in the last week quite strongly, and again, it's still staying very low. Uh, a break above that multi-month peak might trigger something negative like that. Remembering these are contrarian indicators, but this lack of conviction for the upside from the retail investor is usually pretty bullish. And you can see that clearly in the bull fund assets, there's a level here. I'm looking at the bull fund assets in isolation. Um, there's a level here that we know over the last three or four years when the bull fund assets dip below that level tends to mark uh, the lows. And actually the bull funds have just done that again. So again, there's no bearish indications on this chart. Just zoom in a little on that. Uh, we noted uh, just a couple of weeks ago when this happened, um, when the bull fund assets below that level and hit the multi-month low, that that triggered some upside. And we're kind of playing around with that level again uh, today. So if we see the ratio do this, that would be even more powerful indication of more upside. Public poll from AAII. We know that five weeks ago, the bulls percent reached an extreme low, of just 17.8%. That was the lowest level of bullish sentiment since 2005. So just five weeks ago, uh, an extreme lack of bullish sentiment. And that's, again, usually pretty um, bullish from a contrarian point of view. This week, the bulls came in at 311 that was higher, the bears percent came in a little lower at 26.7, an 11 week low. So a little more bullish this week. And we've actually gone into positive territory on the net. But if we look at the four week moving average of bulls minus bears, that black line there, you can see that with the S&P uh, approaching the highs here on the chart, possibly last year's highs, uh, we're not exactly overrun with bulls here. And this is probably fuel Investors Intelligence reading, their poll looks a little different with the four-week moving average of net, as we know last week, probing above the previous high. So we're kind of in a multi-month peak for the Investors Intelligence, but still below the highs that we've seen over the last couple of years, which is quite a bit higher. And if we look at the Lipper US fund flow data, uh, they reported outflows again this week, the week to the 6th of July of 1.4 billion. Uh, gives a total four-week summation or flow number of a negative 17.7 billion outflow. Um, that should read, which is low, but higher than the negative 26 billion reached five weeks ago. So again, five weeks ago, there's that extreme negative sentiment down here. So slightly above that extreme, um, but again, as far as the sentiment indicators go, there's nothing on here to worry us and indicate that prices will come immediately lower. So let us look at some key charts. Uh, this is the Russell 2000 ETF, IWM. Uh, the major point of control is at 115.35. And if I just zoom in on this, you can see that once again today, in fact, we are probing above that level into a stronger price location for the 2000. One of the key charts we've been following this week in the pre-open following last week's video is the DAX, the German DAX index. This week been in a weaker price location back below its major at 9660. Uh, that is just about the high today and the high the last four days. Price back above that level in printing time would be a, a big positive. And the other European chart I identified um, with a very clear point of control is the FTSE futures. That's FTSE 100, UK FTSE 100 futures, 65.25. And we're just peaking above and probing into that level, or just above that level at the end of this week here. This is TLT, T-bond ETF. Broke above its previous peak from the early 2015. Broke above there in June. And currently, you can see it's holding above that level. Well, very overbought, but d at the moment, holding and consolidating that breakout and sentiment towards bonds. I follow various sentiment measures. This is a, a measure of public sentiment along the bottom here for T-bonds. Here's the 7th of July, uh, coming from June over here on the right, where 20% uh, were bullish, which is very low, 23 on the 23rd of June. And then we started falling. We're currently at 15. So 
public opinion generally fading this, probably looking at how far it's come, the extent of it, the overboughtness of it, and basically betting it can't go any higher. I might want to see that a sentiment change before assuming that bonds will see any reasonable correction. Here's GLD, the gold ETF, very extended overbought situation uh, from the same sentiment file uh, that I just showed you. I can tell you that the somewhat different, the public actually 75% bullish on gold right now. Difficult to find any clear levels up here. Main point was we found support here at the previous point of control at 115.15 and here um, the major moved higher and then we came above it here and from this sort of powerful development the point of control moving higher and then strong price location above it we've really come higher here across the Brexit surprise and the safe haven bid um, short term difficult to call longer term just has to hold above that 118.22 reported last week that the uh, nine month point of control had migrated up from down here somewhere up to 1170 on the United States oil fund uh, and that was in here and since that point since the point of control migrated higher uh, oil uh, certainly USO has struggled to hold that level and we're kind of on the low or close to the low of the week here price oscillator is below zero for a few good few days doesn't look too encouraging. The support is down here around 10, which is the halfway point of the February low. New longs, I'd wait until we see price back above 11.70 unless this point of control migrates. Showing you the dollar index here and can actually zoom in a little. This is the, the high that we're working this halfway point here from and this low. So it's an important level. We've probed up into it. Currently trading very close to it. Said last week that price consolidating or finding a higher low above that level would be bullish. Good news is we've held the two year uh, support now that moved higher, sorry, moved lower recently. Um, sorry, 95.25, that's the two year point of control support and we've held that and consolidated here and that does look like a higher low on that level. So this is all pretty encouraging. Now if we could overcome this uh, clear resistance or natural resistance, this halfway point, and a, a, just a little minor higher low above that or some consolidation just to, just to show that we can print some time above it um, I'd be pretty bullish on the dollar here price back below 95.25 puts it all in a different situation actually showing you here an hourly chart of the other real key chart which is the pound dollar and you can see the volatility across the Brexit decision um, we went up to 150 before it and then the big surprise and the complete collapse uh, and then a period of consolidation over a few days and this emerged 132.86 as a very minor point of control and if I zoom in here on this hourly chart even though it's down a lot I don't see any positive price action across here as of yet price back up here would be a different situation but what may happen is we'll see consolidation across this period and this point of control as this is a minor time frame chart could quickly come lower and that would alter the situation that would either send us into a tailspin again um, or we'd see the chart attempting to find support above that new POC but right now I think the chart would have to come higher first uh, to give us some time above 132.86 before I could think about the long side finally the Euro FX chart from this important low to this high uh, around just below 111 here finishing the week below that level chance getting a bit messy with this long term ranging activity the clearest thing to say is that price down here is a negative below that level and indicates a possible retest and price above 113.13 uh, would be a sign of strength Okay, that concludes. Once again, I wish you a good weekend and thank you for watching.